Hey Spartans, Mrs. May here. Today is Friday. It's the end of the week. It is the 16th of October and here is your quick right. Think of a short term healthy eating goal that you can work on the rest of this week. Now I understand it's Friday so the week's almost over so feel free to continue your goal into the next week. But you're going to write down what your focus will be from our nutrition discussion this week, whether it's food choices or portions or nutritional guidelines. Um, here's your sentence starter. This week, my goal is to blank. So Mrs. Mays is to incorporate more water and I can achieve this by completing these action steps. So one of my action steps is to always have a glass of water nearby. And then I would create another action step. So please list at least two, use complete sentences, get that good writing practice in. And now is the time where you can pause this show and complete that quick write and then you can push play and we'll begin talking about our nutrition project that is due next week. So to find it, you're going to go over to my page and you're going to click start here, which is where you will always go to find your assignments. I know that a lot of other teachers use the assignments tab, but guys, I've told you before, Mrs. Mays are put in the modules and it shows you exactly what you need to do and on which week to do it. So this week's is 10-5 to 10-16. Should have done these last week for 10-5. Okay, you had that 2.1 chunked article, then you had different presentations, you were to vote for your favorite poster. Uh, newest thing is teacher notes or the slides from each week are put in the teacher notes section. So that will come soon um, for the nutrition as well. So there's your vocab words, essential question, presentation if you missed the first one, which led into this nutritional reading, which will help you with this project. So make sure you do that first. Um, and then you can rewatch any videos you miss. 3.4 will be loaded by the end of today. Then you're going to click 3.2 assignment. Okay, so all my assignments are indented there. You go through these one step at a time. I'm sorry that they're not by day, but that allows you guys to self pace and go through things on your own. You'll have a brief paragraph to read here about what a one pager is, and then as well as what are Costas questions. These will both be essential for you to do before trying to do this project. Um, if you want a little walkthrough on making one pagers, I've made you a video there, seven minutes long. Then there's another video explaining what Costas questions are in case the reading above didn't make sense. Step five here is you choosing a word that's important to you from our nutrition unit, whether it's one of the proteins, okay, so a different type of food group, or maybe a specific vitamin or mineral you're passionate about or found interesting. Um, perhaps water, you learned something new, so you could do a little bit of a one-pager on what you learned about water. So lots of words to choose from. You can go back and look at my slideshow for more vocab words. They can choose from. I encourage you to avoid using nutrition as your word um, because your one pager won't really tie together very well. So that's our goal. Here are your expectations for the final product. And then at the bottom, I can't hover over it now, but it will say load 3.2 assignment. That's going to take you into this PowerPoint here. Okay, and it'll look just like this on your page. You'll start with a blank canvas. Um, the inspiration to this one pager was because one of my students really wanted to talk about the Impossible Burger in class, but we couldn't quite squeeze it into this week's lesson. So this gave them an opportunity to share what they knew about the Impossible Burger. So instead of a specific category, they chose a specific product and discussed its nutritional value in a visual poster because you can read this paragraph here on your own in the PowerPoint. But a one pager is meant to show me what you've learned in a creative way. And just like our last poster, you can either do it by hand or you can do it here on the computer virtually. But let's talk about what needs to be on your one pager. And you start with a blank canvas or a blank white piece of paper if you're doing it at home. Your title should pop out just like this one when we look at the example. We know it's about the impossible burger, okay, and possibly about vegans and iron rich foods. Then you're going to use colored pencils and pens or markers at home, or if you are doing it virtually, here's a quick step to show you how to get pictures going. Insert, image, upload from computer if you already have pictures you want to use on your computer, or search the web. OK, 
Okay, and you can search thing like fiber and then I can click a picture I like, I can insert it. Okay, and if maybe this is the background I wanna use because that's one of the requirements, I can send this to the very back. Okay, and now my picture is behind my words and then I can highlight the text. And I can change the color so that maybe it's white and it pops above the picture more. I'm gonna control Z so that that's not on your slide there. But you need that picture in the background to fill, help fill the entire page. Be purposeful about the arrangement of the pictures in your one pager. I should be able to look at your poster and know exactly what you're talking about. I shouldn't see any pictures of like a random dog or cat unless it somehow ties into your poster. Little extra credit opportunity here at the bottom. Mrs. May says a lot of funny things sometimes. So if you've written down a quote or you're off the top of your head know something that I've said that's kind of silly and you wanna put that in your poster on the border somewhere, you could also fill your border with words and facts if you wanted to. Okay, second page of requirements, looking for at least three visual images. So here's the virtual example that I've given you. You'll highlight that text and change the title to either the product, the nutritional product you're talking about, or the nutritional vocab word or food group, say, or category that you want to discuss. Okay, and there's four boxes there. Now, if you decide um, not to do a fourth picture, maybe you just put, you insert a shape. Okay, that's a square. And you just decide to do a color and maybe um, your vocab word, if you send it, if you go to order and send it backwards, that word will come through. So maybe you could have your vocab word just stand over that. But um, I highly encourage you to use more pictures to show me what you've learned. Okay, so at least three. And then you need it three to five vocab words related to your topic, okay? So this student chose vegan, iron rich. Um, looks like there wasn't a third one, so they probably like lose a point for that. So make sure you look at those expectations before loading this project so you know exactly where the point distributions are. This next part is the hardest, so that's why I encourage you to do that reading and watch that tutorial video um, on the assignment so that you can understand what this cost us house is because you're gonna be creating two level two or level three questions. That's the middle and upper part of the house. So the level one questions are like your who, what, where, when. Okay, and there it is again, put that symbolic border. So let's talk those cost us questions. You're designing questions from either level two or level three or both that'll get other sixth graders thinking about the nutritional choices that they're making, okay? Um, if you're drawing your poster by hand, you're still gonna come to this PowerPoint slide and you're gonna insert your questions here. If your question or your answer to your questions, we'll be answering them ourselves, okay? If it's too long, you can always go over here to the font up top and you can make it smaller or bigger. Okay, so when I open your project, I'll be looking for your two questions. Here's an example. Mrs. May just used the very first word in level two, attribute. So what do you attribute your healthy body image to? Then I would answer, Mrs. May attributes her healthy body image to how athletic she was or how physically active she was growing up as a kid. Once you're done with that, you can then do your virtual version of the one pager. Or if you're doing it by hand, you can do it by hand and then you're gonna upload the picture on this slide. Make sure when you show me your picture, okay, that it's nice and centered. And then I know you can't really see it because of my green screen. It's nice and centered and I can really see what's on your poster, okay? Um, also, if you don't like my formatting here, you could, delete this text box and you could put your own here because this is what I'm going to do. When I open up your um, project after you've turned it in, I'm going to look for your questions and answers. If I don't see anything on this slide, then I'm going to go to the next slide and see what you loaded there. Um, if you end up saving a picture um, to your computer, you just go to image, upload from computer, and then you can collect, click the file and it will upload on this slide. Now let's say you don't like the border on this one. Okay, some of the kids in one of my classes didn't like the um, 
roundness. So you can go to insert shape and you can create your own border. This one right here has a nice border shape and I go from edge to corner to corner. And then I can click and change the color. And maybe I'm a duck fan. So I do this green and black one, or you could do, I'll tell you this much, if you go over here and do the same thing with the orange one, it's really good for the OSU fans. So I don't mind if you do that. Do try to find an order uh, image that relates, okay? And that's all you need to know for your project. If you have questions, email me over the weekend. I'll try to get to them as much as I can. Hey Spartans, Mrs. May here. Today is Friday, it's the end of the week. It is the 16th of October and here is your quick write. Think of a short-term healthy eating goal that you can work on the rest of this week. Now, I understand it's Friday, so the week's almost over. So feel free to continue your goal into the next week. But you're gonna write down what your focus will be from our nutrition discussion this week, whether it's food choices or portions or nutritional guidelines. Um, here's your sentence starter. This week, my goal is to blank. So Mrs. Mays is to incorporate more water and I can achieve this by completing these action steps. So one of my action steps is to always have a glass of water nearby. And then I would create another action step. So please list at least two, use complete sentences, get that good writing practice in. And now is the time where you can pause this show and complete that quick write and then you can push play and we'll begin talking about our nutrition project that is due next week. So to find it, you're going to go over to my page and you're going to click start here, which is where you will always go to find your assignments. I know that a lot of other teachers use the assignments tab, but guys, I've told you before, Mrs. Mays are put in the modules and it shows you exactly what you need to do and on which week to do it. So this week's is 10-5 to 10-16. Should have done these last week for 10-5. Okay, you had that 2.1 chunked article, then you had different presentations, you were to vote for your favorite poster. Uh, newest thing is teacher notes or the slides from each week are put in the teacher notes section. So that will come soon um, for the nutrition as well. So there's your vocab words, essential question, presentation if you missed the first one, which led into this nutritional reading, which will help you with this project. So make sure you do that first. Um, and then you can rewatch any videos you miss. 3.4 will be loaded by the end of today. Then you're going to click 3.2 assignment. Okay, so all my assignments are indented there. You go through these one step at a time. I'm sorry that they're not by day, but that allows you guys to self pace and go through things on your own. You'll have a brief paragraph to read here about what a one pager is, and then as well as what are Costas questions. These will both be essential for you to do before trying to do this project. Um, if you want a little walkthrough on making one pagers, I've made you a video there, seven minutes long. Then there's another video explaining what Costas questions are in case the reading above didn't make sense. Step five here is you choosing a word that's important to you from our nutrition unit, whether it's one of the proteins, okay, so a different type of food group, or maybe a specific vitamin or mineral you're passionate about or found interesting. Um, perhaps water, you learned something new, so you could do a little bit of a one-pager on what you learned about water. So lots of words to choose from. You can go back and look at my slideshow for more vocab words. They can choose from. I encourage you to avoid using nutrition as your word um, because your one pager won't really tie together very well. So that's our goal. Here are your expectations for the final product. And then at the bottom, I can't hover over it now, but it will say load 3.2 assignment. That's going to take you into this PowerPoint here. Okay, and it'll look just like this on your page. 
You'll start with a blank canvas. Um, the inspiration to this one pager was because one of my students really wanted to talk about the impossible burger in class, but we couldn't quite squeeze it into this week's lesson. So this gave them an opportunity to share what they knew about the impossible burger. So instead of a specific category, they chose a specific product and discussed its nutritional value in a visual poster because you can read this paragraph here on your own in the PowerPoint, but a one pager is meant to show me what you've learned in a creative way. And just like our last poster, you can either do it by hand or you can do it here on the computer virtually. But let's talk about what needs to be on your one pager. And you start with a blank canvas or a blank white piece of paper if you're doing it at home. Your title should pop out just like this one when we look at the example. We know it's about the Impossible Burger, okay, and possibly about vegans and iron rich foods. Then you're going to use colored pencils and pens or markers at home or if you are doing it virtually, here's a quick step to show you how to get pictures going. Insert, image, Upload from computer if you already have pictures you want to use on your computer or search the web. Okay, and you can search things like fiber and then I can click a picture I like, you can insert it. Okay, and if maybe this is the background I want to use because that's one of the requirements, I can send this to the very back. Okay, and now my picture is behind my words and then I can highlight the text. And I can change the color so that maybe it's white and it pops above the picture more. I'm going to control Z so that that's not on your slide there. But you need that picture in the background to fill, help fill the entire page. Be purposeful about the arrangement of the pictures in your one pager. I should be able to look at your poster and know exactly what you're talking about. I shouldn't see any pictures of like a random dog or cat unless it somehow ties into your poster. Little extra credit opportunity here at the bottom. Mrs. May says a lot of funny things sometimes. So if you've written down a quote or you're off the top of your head know something that I've said that's kind of silly and you wanna put that in your poster on the border somewhere, you could also fill your border with words and facts if you wanted to. Okay, second page of requirements, I'm looking for at least three visual images. So here's the virtual example that I've given you. You'll highlight that text and change the title to either the product, the nutritional product you're talking about, or the nutritional vocab word or food group, say, or category that you want to discuss. Okay, and there's four boxes there. Now, if you decide um, not to do a fourth picture, maybe you just put, you insert a shape. Okay, that's a square. And you just decide to do a color and maybe um, your vocab word, if you send it, if you go to order and send it backwards, that word will come through. So maybe you could have your vocab word just stand over that. But um, I highly encourage you to use more pictures to show me what you've learned. Okay, so at least three. And then you need it three to five vocab words related to your topic, okay? So this student chose vegan, iron rich. Um, looks like there wasn't a third one, so they probably like lose a point for that. So make sure you look at those expectations before loading this project so you know exactly where the point distributions are. This next part is the hardest, so that's why I encourage you to do that reading and watch that tutorial video um, on the assignment so that you can understand what this cost us house is because you're gonna be creating two level two or level three questions. That's the middle and upper part of the house. So the level one questions are like your who, what, where, when. Okay, and there it is again, put that symbolic border. So let's talk those cost us questions. You're designing questions from either level two or level three or both that'll get other sixth graders thinking about the nutritional choices that they're making, okay? Um, if you're drawing your poster by hand, you're still gonna come to this PowerPoint slide and you're gonna insert your questions here. If your question or your answer to your questions, we'll be answering them ourselves, okay? If it's too long, you can always go over here to the font up top and you can make it smaller or bigger. 
Okay, so when I open your project, I'll be looking for your two questions. Here's an example. Mrs. May just used the very first word in level two, attribute. So what do you attribute your healthy body image to? Then I would answer. Mrs. May attributes her healthy body image to how athletic she was or how physically active she was growing up as a kid. Once you're done with that, you can then do your virtual version of the one pager. Or if you're doing it by hand, you can do it by hand and then you're gonna upload the picture on this slide. Make sure when you show me your picture, okay, that it's nice and centered. And then I know you can't really see it because of my green screen. It's nice and centered and I can really see what's on your poster, okay? Um, also, if you don't like my formatting here, you could delete this text box and you could put your own here because this is what I'm going to do. When I open up your um, project after you've turned it in, I'm going to look for your questions and answers. If I don't see anything on this slide, then I'm going to go to the next slide and see what you loaded there. Um, if you end up saving a picture um, to your computer, you just go to image, upload from computer, and then you can collect, click the file and it will upload on this slide. Now let's say you don't like the border on this one. Okay, some of the kids in one of my classes didn't like the um, roundness. So you can go to insert shape and you can create your own border. This one right here has a nice border shape and I go from edge to corner to corner. And then I can click and change the color. And maybe I'm a duck fan. So I do this green and black one, or you could do, I'll tell you this much, if you go over here and do the same thing with the orange one, it's really good for the OSU fans. So I don't mind if you do that. Do try to find an order uh, image that relates, okay? And that's all you need to know for your project. If you have questions, email me over the weekend. I'll try to get to them as much as I can. But let's go ahead and start our lecture notes. Did you know you already have a tool to figure out how much food you should be eating from certain groups. It's our hands. It's really cool because they're portable. Um, I learned this from my trainer this last year and it's been really cool and a kind of life changing. So after we talk about labels, we're gonna get into what your hand can tell you about your portion sizes and how much food you really need. This slide right here, I encourage you to read. It talks about, um, just setting goals, imagining your perfect day and what you want to accomplish, um, but setting goals that you can reach. Okay, now let's talk how to read a food label. There's a lot of information here. There's two different labels here. Um, the most common thing people look at is how much calories are in something. Now, if this was a uh, cereal box, okay, I looked at it and go, ooh, only 230 calories, but, my actual cereals, if we look at the serving size, two thirds of a cup is not very much. When we pour cereal in our bowls, it's probably a cup and a half. So that's three times the actual serving size, which means this number triples, which means these numbers down here also triple. So I'm looking at 690 calories for one bowl of cereal. Okay, so just be aware, pay attention to the serving size. Um, if you are counting calories, I do not encourage it at your age. That's why we're going to talk about our hand teaching us about proper portions. But let's look at the labels and what we learned this last week about fat and salt and carbs, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. Okay, total fat in this product is eight grams per serving. Notice it lists saturated fats and trans fats. Are those good fats or bad fats? If you said bad fats, you're correct. But the good news is it's only one gram per serving. So that means if there's totaled eight grams and only one gram of bad fat, that means eight minus one is seven. So there's seven grams of healthy fat in whatever kind of product this was. Cholesterol, think of like your egg yolks, egg yolks, they have cholesterol in them, and sodium. So 160 milligrams, guys, notice they go between grams and milligrams. That's often a little trick that different companies use so that you're not totally aware of how much is in a product, but it's gonna be 0.16 grams. And a gram, remember those little cubes in math class that you guys use? Okay, that's about a gram. 
So this is not even a quarter of a gram of salt per serving. So you can probably imagine doing a salt shaker, just a couple twists. And uh, that would be how much would be on that two third of a cup. Let's look at our carbs. There's 37 grams of carbs. Four of those are fiber. What does fiber help us accomplish in our bodies? If you said poop, that is correct. So if you're, you know, struggling and you're in the type one category, then, which is constipated, this is a good way to help get things moving. Same with staying hydrated. Then carbs, let's take a look at our sugars. Okay, there's a total of 12 grams, which you could go, whoa. But what you really want to pay attention to is those unnecessary added sugars. There's 10 grams. But if we have a total of 12, how many grams does that leave us of unprocessed normal sugar that it just naturally comes with? If you said two grams, that's correct, because 12 minus 10 is two. Another great thing, if you're looking for a little bit of protein, protein helps us not crave so much. Now, I think that would be countered by these 10 grams of added sugar, okay? Because um, eating more processed sugar causes us to crave other things, but protein helps us feel full. This has three grams every two third cup. Then this really cool information down at the bottom tells you about your vitamins and minerals. So vitamin D source right here. Then it also included three of our minerals. It has calcium, iron, and potassium. And that's just kind of the basics of how to read a food label. So grab a label at home, um, whether it's your favorite snack or your favorite cereal and see how your nutrition label compares. Now, I put two slides on here. There's the average um, calorie goal for a 13-year-old boy, average calorie girl for a 13 calorie for a 13-year-old girl. Now, if you're an active girl, this will probably be a higher number. And then for an active boy, it'll be higher as well. So just know that these aren't set in stone. Definitely talk to your doctor before you start counting calories. Um, but what I want to look at is how we look at our portions. Okay, so three palms a day is about how much you need. So maybe you eat a little bit of protein in the morning through eggs or a protein shake. Um, maybe at lunch you have a sandwich with some meat on it or a peanut butter jelly. Uh, and then at dinner, maybe you guys have chicken. So you kind of pay attention to that. So however much can fit in your palm, not like stacked up, okay, but just kind of laid on top, that's how many portions of protein. So if I eat this much scrambled eggs, then I have that much meat on my turkey sandwich, and then at night maybe we have two chicken breasts. Then I've gone over my three palm size, but that's okay. Everything in moderation is acceptable. And again, there's some examples here of um, vegan options as well. Then you're going to add the vegetables to your plate, and that is one fist. The cool part about these portions is they grow with you as you get bigger and become an adult. Okay, so you're not eating the same amount as a baby does your whole life. Okay, it grows with you and it's portable. Yay, you're never going to lose it, hopefully. Um, so six fifths of that throughout the day. And there's some more examples. Then my favorite, carbs. As a runner, I would always do this. It was always breads and potatoes and lots and lots of fruit. So getting those nine cupped handfuls was never a problem. I could probably eat three or four cupped handfuls. So this much. Okay, of carbs, you're gonna put that on your plate next, and then you end with adding your healthy fats. Now this is an okay point too to add your unhealthy fats, so like your cheeses, um, but you're only doing a thumb's worth, and that's not very much, okay? So, but you can have up to 12 for that, and I feel like the girls one is about the same as well. So take a look at those, explore. Um, let's talk about building our plate. I'm not gonna read you this whole piece here, but we start putting our protein on the plate first because that's kind of the most important. It's gonna help us feel full. Then we have the vegetables, which have the greatest source of nutrients, especially our superfood we talked about this last week is those dark green veggies. Then you add your sweets or your carbs. So those yummy potatoes maybe. Um, it's just a cupped hand. And then you add your um healthy fats so maybe you do a sprinkle of cheese on your mashed potatoes or if you're going the healthier side maybe a slice of avocados 
so one slice, but I usually put like three on there, so. Oops, these are really cool slides as well. I encourage you to look at the PowerPoint that'll be shared at the end of this week. Here are your proteins. So we're not telling you to cut the things out that you love but instead to compare and look at the things that you should eat less of, like yummy cheeseburgers, and try replacing it with something in the eat some category, or even better, in the eat more category. The same thing happens for carbs. A lot of middle schoolers are down here in the bottom right, so you don't have to jump to this far left corner right away, but start you know, finding a couple alternatives in the eat less, and then move towards the eat some, and if you really wanna be healthy, then try to go to the eat more category. And there they are for the fats again, those yummy bacon and breakfast sausage, but check this out. Not milk chocolate, but dark chocolate is in the eat some category. So if you wanna treat yourself, sometimes you can use that, um, but then there's some other healthier alternatives. This slide is really cool. Um, this has definitely become a common phrase to eat the rainbow when it comes to vegetables. And what I love about this picture, there's so many different colored vegetables I didn't know about. I honestly, as a kid, only ate the green and the yellow stuff. I didn't realize there were all these other choices. And that's all for you today, okay? Um, I hope this encourages you. Please email me if you have any questions about this 3.2 assignment, um, and I'll try to follow them throughout the weekend if I can, but happy Friday, Spartans. Bye.